All right, what's going on, guys? And welcome to the final match with um, Rakdos Control. Who, um, his hand's pretty sweet and pretty okay with this. Uh, opponent's playing blue, of course they are. Uh, opponent plays Island and Preordain. We drew a Lightning Bolt. All right, so we're definitely gonna play Wrench Mind next turn. Opponent plays Demir Aqueducts, so at least it's not Mono Blue again. We draw another Wrench Mind. That's really good against control because card advantage is going to be very important in this game. Put it discards Island and Una's Grace. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to pass. Put it plays an Island. And passes. We draw a Blightning. Wow. Well, card advantage is looking good right now. So should we go Blightning or Wrench Mine? Let's do Wrench Mine because they might have a counter spell. So we might as well sell, save that um, extra three damage. Yep. Counter spell. Okay. Well, you know, I'm okay with getting rid of a counter spell as well. I, I'll trade my two mana wrench mine for a two mana counter spell. It evens out, right? Like, it's fine. Opponent plays a tap land, gains one life, plays mole drifter, or evokes it. So they draw two cards, go back to five. We draw a Phyrexian Rager. Well, that, that also works. That's fantastic. So let's play Blightning. Opponent goes to 18. Discards Chittering Rats and Doomblade. Alright. So this is looking much more like a Demir control than the um, Fairy control that we saw earlier. Right? That was the first game, right? Fairy control. Um, opponent plays Unearth getting Chittering Rats. Well, we know how annoying that is. So we will put Grey Merchant on top. And opponent passes. We redraw our Grey Merchant so we don't draw a card basically. Um, let's play Chainer's Edict, make them sacrifice that. So that's gone. We're looking much better in the card advantage department. We've got four cards to their three, or two, or three again here in a second. Put a plays another Chittering Rats. Yep, that's, that's mildly annoying. So Great Merchant goes right back on top again. And we don't get to draw a card again, basically. Let's bolt that at end of turn. So we can play the Rager next turn. Redraw our Grey Merchant. Yep. Play Phyrexian Rager. Draw a card. Lose one life. Draw a Duress. That might not be terrible, but they are almost out of cards. If they have a crazy turn, they could go completely out of cards. It'll depend. Put a plays a Dismal Backwater. Gets a, another life. Goes to 19. Um, plays a Mall Drifter. They cast it, so they draw two cards. That's fine. We can duress and terminate. And they've given us more stuff to um, see with duress. So yep, let's cast it duress. See what they have. Ghostly Flicker and two counter spells. Ooh. So Ghostly Flicker is what they're built around. But counter spells are more annoying. Especially if we can control the board. Like the Ghostly Flickers aren't as bad. Because we're going to be killing everything. But at the same time that is what their decks built around. I'm going to go with the counter spell but... Um, that deck is, this is the Demir Handlock, it looks like. Ghostly Flicker, Chittering Rats, yeah. We will also make them sacrifice the Mole Drifter, so that's gone. We will go to combat. Attack for two. Opponent's gonna go to 17, and we will pass. Opponent does nothing, passes, we draw a Blightning. They do have a counter spell though, hmm. Let's attack for two. Opponent goes to 15. Do we run the Blightning and just get the counter spell? I don't think so. I want to pass. Let's see if they draw like another Mole Drifter and tap out or something. They don't. Uh, we draw a Mountain. Alright. Let's just go to combat. Attack for two. We'll just press our advantage. Deal as much damage as we can while they are floundering. Hope they play something big like a Mole Drifter again and... Deadweight kills the um, Phyrexian Rager. Alright, well, sure. We draw a Sign in Blood. Well, that's not terrible. Let's do that. Draw two, lose two, get another Blightning, and a Gurmag Angler. That, that could win us the game if we can get it to resolve. So we can cast the Blightning. That will likely draw the Counterspell. There's a Seagate Oracle. The Blightning will likely draw the Counterspell, and then we can run out the Angler, so that'll be the plan, I think. Draw a Swamp. Alright, so... Let's 
run out the Blightning. This should, I would think, draw the counter spell. Most likely, I would think. It does not. They just take it. Hmm. Dang. Now what do we do? They discard Moldrifter and Doomblade. Hmm. Now I'm I'm torn. I don't know if I want to run out the Angler. I guess we just wait another turn. We have Terminate at instant speed, so if they play anything threatening, we can just kill it. The opponent plays Reaping the Graves. Returns a creature card to their hand, and it has Storm, so they get two of those. So they get Chittering Rats and Moldrifter. Well, if they tap out for Moldrifter, um, that'd be pretty fantastic. Or if they play Chittering Rats, that's not super... They do play Chittering Rats, alright. So we're going to put the Grey Merchant on top. And opponent's just going to pass, aren't they? Yeah. We'll, we'll take the one. We go to 16. Let's terminate the rats. At end of turn. Oh, we're going to see Ghostly Flicker. Alright. Well, that's annoying. Flickering rats is so obnoxious. I mean, that's how that deck works, but... So they get to get the triggers from Seagate Oracle and Chittering Rats. So we have to put another card on top. So now we're a card behind. Because we got hit by that twice. But now we can Blightning and Angler without um, any worry. So redraw our Blightning. Let's play that. Deal 3 to the opponent. The opponent goes to 7. They have to discard 2. They discard Counterspell and Disfigure. And now we can run out the Angler. Without fear of it being countered. So let's um, let's delve some stuff away. Not the Chainer's Addict. So yep there we go. Alright we're going to 5-5 on the battlefield. Opponent's at 7. We have no cards in hand though. So we are officially losing the, um, the, the card advantage race so to speak. And the control matchup. Opponent plays a Mall Drifter. Draws 2 more cards. Well shoot. Yeah control matchups it's just... So it's all about eking out some card advantage wherever you can, and um, we're starting to lose that. Fortunately, we do have enough. Oh wait, no, they they can they can triple block. Also, they they evoked Moldrifter and Ghostly flickered it. So there's that. So that's just going to be in play now. They are tapped out again. We do have a Gray Merchant on top. We know that. So maybe this is salvageable. I mean, we can deal three and gain three. All right, there's Grey Merchant. Um, yeah, I guess we, I mean, we just run it out, right? We don't want them flickering the rats and making us put it back on top. So, Grey Merchant down. Put it goes to 5, we go to 19, but now we're kind of stuck. How do we win from here? I mean, we can't top deck anything that's going to be super useful. I mean, any creature removal spell would be useful. Chainer's Addict. All right, well, we're going to discard the Grey Merchant. Another one. Well, shoot. Um, this has gone poorly. So, put a Caspiridane as well. Put a place Demir Aqueducts. Attacks for five. We go to fourteen. We draw a land. Ooh, that's that's. The good news is we're closer to being able to flash back our own um, Tainer's Edicts. So maybe it's okay. We're gonna take another five though. We go to 9. Opponent has 5 cards in hand too, so... Looking not great. Chittering Rats. Something tells me that's just going to be countered, but let's try it. Run it out. See what happens. Probably bad things. Yep, looking bad. Opponent's tapping lands. Una's Grace. Drawing a card. Alright. So looking for a counter spell. That means they don't have any in hand. Oh, wait. Or maybe they do. Tapping more lands. What are you, what are you doing? Another Una's Grace. Sure. Chittering Rats resolves. Fantastic. So that should stop the other Chittering Rats out. Well, never mind. Never mind. Forget to forget I said that. Our Chittering Rats are dead. Opponent can kill us in two turns now. Um, even if we top deck like a land or a terminate, it's looking pretty bad. We go to four. Opponent evokes a Mold Drifter. Draws two cards. I think they will just cast that. Unless they have another ghostly flicker. Okay. I don't know why you wouldn't just cast that and get the 2-2. Two -two, but sure. Put a place of Bog. Wiping out the graveyard. Blightning. Oh, so close. But 
Let's just cast it for sheer satisfaction. Bring our opponent down to two. Oh, they're going to they're gonna counter it. Of course they are. Oh, of course they are. Yeah, just concede. Dang, man, this sucks. After the Tron loss. After the stupid mistake against Tron. Could have been 4-0. Now we're 3-1. And now we're going to be losing this game. Not necessarily, but it's going to be a battle. That's for sure. Let's bring in Chainer's Edict. Let's bring in, um, maybe Duress. I'm willing to trade Duresses for counter spells, I think. Um, what don't we want? I guess the white is kind of so-so. So we can take that out. And, oh, uh, I don't want to take anything else out, though. Maybe we don't need the Duress. That's fine. Yeah, we'll take the Duress back out. Let's try this. We'll see how this goes. If we lose this and go 3-2 after the Tron loss. Ugh. Man, that just, that's, that kind of sucks. Alright, let's see what our hand looks like. Mmm, not terrible. Gurmag Angler's nice if we can keep our graveyard in our graveyard. That that doesn't make sense. But yeah, if we can keep our graveyard in existence, that'd be useful. So let's play a Swamp and Pass. Put up plays that Dismal Backwater. Gains one life, goes to 21. We draw another land. Alright, well, let's just go straight into Wrench Mind. Force our opponent to discard two. Let's see what we hit. Wrench Mind is going to be so frustrating, and I never see people play it. Like, I don't know how many times I've been hit with a Wrench Mind. It's not very often, but man, it's just, it's satisfying. Seagate Oracle and Chittering Rats were the cards, so that's not terrible. That's basically how that deck works, and now we got those out of there. We draw a Chittering Rats. We're curving out nicely now, all of a sudden. So let's play Chittering Rats. Opponent's going to lose their draw for the turn. And we will pass. Opponent plays an island. And plays Seagate Oracle. Alright. Opponent passes. We draw a Duress. I kind of like that. Let's take a look at their hand. Oh man. Really? Moldrifter lands. I guess we're hitting a Duress with a Duress. Not, not super exciting there. But okay. Let's play Chainer's Edict. Force them to sacrifice the Seagate Oracle. So that's gone. We go to combat, attack for two, bring the opponent back to 20, and we pass. So, haven't been doing a very good job of gaining cards this game. We're down to two, put it up to four. Well, down to three now. Or wait, no, back to four. But uh, they have a couple of lands, so we know that. Uh, they have Bajuka Bog and Mole Drifter that we know for sure. That's a Lightning Bolt. So, uh, have they drawn a counter spell? I guess we're going to find out. Let's try to run out Gurmag Angler. Does it resolve? It does resolve. Fantastic. We're set up really good now. We've got 7 damage per turn. We know they don't have much. They have a Mole Drifter, but they don't have the mana to play it yet. Unless they have an untapped land here. They do not. Chittering Rats. Um, yeah, sure. So, Lightning Bolt goes back on top. Alright. Opponent plays a Bajuka Bog. So that's gone. They have a Mole Drifter in hand. We're going to draw the Lightning Bolt. I guess we bolt the rats and attack. That's going to allow us to attack for 7 instead of just 5. So, yep. Attack for 7. Opponent goes to 11. Opponent casts Mole Drifter. Sure. So they draw 2 up to 5 cards, which is scary. Man, if we could just get through a couple more times. Put a place at the mere aqueducts. Alright. We draw Blightning. I kinda like that. Let's play Blightning. Force our opponent to discard two. So they go to eight. And they discard two islands. Alright, that's not the most exciting, but that's fine. Let's go to combat. Attack for five. Opponent chooses the chump block. Alright. So, no creatures in play. Uh, we... Don't know what they have in hand. They have four cards in hand. Chainer's Addict. Um... Alright, we will sacrifice the rats. Hopefully not another one. Stormbound Geist. Um, that is okay, I guess. Put a place Bajuka Bog. Wiping out our graveyard. We don't need it. That's fine. We draw Sign and Blood. Um, that's useful. Actually, wait. Uh, let's... Let's not. Let's, let's attack for five. We might be able to kill them with it, so let's not rush into that. When it goes to three. Uh, do we do we try to hit them with it next turn or do we see if we can draw a lightning bolt? 
Let's run it. Oh, this is risky. Lightning bolt, come on. Lightning, come on. Lightning! That's it. That's the game. Lucky top deck. There we go. That's it. Oh, whew. that was... I, I, I could have been a little bit safer there and not not rushed into that, but that was that was good. That was good. All right, there we go. That's a, that's a win. One more game. It always seems like it happens. Last game of the series. We're one and one. This is going to determine the record of the entire series. Are we going to go four and one or three and two? Got to all depend on this hand. Not really, but um, yes, yeah, not bad. Too many lands, but it's doable. We can keep this. We can kill a couple creatures. We've got wrench mind, so yeah, it's it's okay. We draw another wrench mind, so that's what I want to see. That's a uh, that's kind of satisfying. So we're gonna be ripping out four cards from our opponent's hand. We draw a mountain. So let's play a swamp. Let's play. They do have two lands up. I'm gonna pass. I really want to hit two cards with those. So let's wait until they're tapped out. Um, we can always bolt them or bolt whatever creature they play here. If they play anything. They don't. Alright, we draw a swamp. We're drawing too many lands. I don't like it. But, um, uh, we're gonna pass. I just, I don't want those wrench mines to be countered. We're gonna play safely this game because I really want to go 4-1. Opponent doesn't play anything either. Oh, another land. Well, I guess we're just gonna pass again. So long as the opponent's not playing anything, there's there's just, there's no risk here. Opponent plays a relic and passes. We draw a blightning. Hmm. Maybe we start running them out. Let's just go. Let's um. This might get countered. Actually, I should have played wrench mine first. That would have made more sense. Prohibit. All right. So blightning is gone. Let's play wrench mind. Opponent discards this figure and a swamp. Opponent's down to two cards and we have another wrench mind in hand. Um, so this isn't terrible. Opponent makes us exile some cards from our graveyard. Alright. Opponent plays at Demir Aqueducts. We draw... Sign and Blood. Fantastic. Let's do Sign and Blood first. The opponent wants to counter that. Then that would be preferable. They don't. We draw a Grey Merchant and a Mountain. Alright, let's try Wrench Mind. This might go poorly. Though if they, um... Oh, nope. It resolves. Another Disfigure and another Swamp. So opponent's down to one card in hand. So we are winning the card advantage game this match. Or this game. Opponent plays Mole Drifter. Drawing two. Opponent plays Demir Aqueducts. Opponent forces me to exile a card. We will exile Wrench Mind. Not that it matters much. Opponent ends the turn, we draw a terminate. So let's force them to sacrifice the Mole Drifter. That's gone. And we will run out the Grey Merchant, which isn't super exciting right now. It's only two, but you know, it is what it is. Opponent's running out of cards, so. Opponent goes to 20, we go to 21. So they don't play any creatures, or if they do play creatures, we just kill them like that one. All we need really is just like one more creature. Chittering Rats, Phyrexian Rager. And that'd put us in a pretty good position. Opponent plays Stormbound Geist. Alright. Opponent activates Relic. We will exile Sign and Blood. It should have exiled our entire graveyard because now we can flash back Chainer's Addict if we want to. Um, but they can just sacrifice the Stormbound Geist. So, uh, let's play Phyrexian Rager. We did say we needed that. That's what we needed. We did draw one. We get a Gurmag Angler. Hmm. I mean, we can just cast it. Um, Delvig isn't super important here. So we're just gonna pass, because opponent can block our Grey Merchant. We have Bolt and Terminate up, so we can kill anything they play. Um, opponent activates Relic, getting rid of the Chainer's Edict. Not super concerned about it. I mean, it would be nice to have, but the Stormbound Geist kind of makes that less good. Opponent plays Preordain. Try two, draw a card. So what we're looking for now is... Um, actually, I think we're pretty good. We're pretty set up. We can just, we need to kill the Seagate Oracle and then start attacking. Opponent attacks for two. We go to 18. So end of turn. Wait, no. Another Stormbound Geist. Well, that's annoying. Let's bolt the Oracle. End of turn. 
Oracles are gone. Oh, another Grey Merchant. Um, I think we just cast the Angler for now. We might as well exile the Lightning Bolt, not a big deal. So let's play Angler, and I think we just pass. Um, I mean, there's no point in attacking. Oh, no, they, those can't block except for flying. I forgot about that. Right, so let's attack for four. Put a place Echoing Decay on the, um, Rager. All right, so that's gone. But opponent's still going to take two good 18, and now... If they can't kill the Angler, and they have no cards in hand, so they have to uh, top deck an answer for Angler. And we have the Grey Merchant, so... I mean, we're already going to win the race, but that's going to make it even better for us. Opponent attacks for four, we go to 14. What's that card in your hand? I need you to get it out. Opponent doesn't play that card. Oh, Chittering Rats! Well, that's perfect. Let's play Chittering Rats. So that card's going to go right back on top of their library, does it? It does? Fantastic, so it's not a counter spell. Oh wait, it's a ghostly flicker. They bounce the two lands. Alright, all right, we're going to play Grey Merchant. Um, opponent activates Relic. So this is going to deal 7, gain 7. So opponent goes to 13, we go to 21. And we're going to attack for 7. I think we have this. I think we're good. Opponent's got one card in hand. Opponent goes to six. Are we good? Are we are we good here? Are we good? Opponent concedes. Oh, okay. That was nice. So there we go. That's it. That's the series, guys. Um, Rakdos Control and Popper. Not bad. Actually, we played against some really good decks this time. We played against Mono Blue Fairy Control. Um, you know, that's a top deck. We played against Slivers, which is yeah, you know, tier 2, tier 3 maybe. Not super exciting there, but it is a good deck. We played against Burn. Burn's a, you know, top deck. Uh, we played against Tron, and we lost, though we shouldn't have. And then we just beat Demir Handlock or Demir Control. Dang, we would've went 5-0 and oh if I wouldn't have screwed up in Tron. If I wouldn't have made that play mistake, if I wouldn't have clicked through my combat phase against Tron, we would be 5-0. and oh. oh, that's the worst. That would've been a pretty good record too. 5-0 and oh against the decks that we played. Yeah, that would have been satisfying. Instead, we're 4-1. Four 4-1 and one. Four and still not bad. We did play against, again, we played against some very good decks. I'm not displeased with a 4-1 and one record with this kind of budget popper deck, but disappointing that we couldn't have done better. Could have been undefeated. But still, hey, we're 4-1. We're 4-1 four and one. Four and one with Rakdos Control, my favorite archetype ever. So anyway, if you want to see more decks like this, if you like budget decks, typically under 10 tickets and... You know, maybe a little bit janky, but still trying to be competitive on a budget. Check out the channel, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you with whatever deck comes next.